every three years, I'm sitting down with Harold, the CEO of TomTom, Tom, who has been here forever, more than 25 years, to see what's going on and what's going to happen. Because TomTom Tom is always a very interesting company, one of the top companies in the Netherlands, and in a very interesting position. Never boring, always innovative, lots of challenges. Harold, um, let's go through the, uh, the, the processes. Um, first, let's go through the different parts of the business, and then we're going to the most interesting part, the future. How is the consumer section doing? Well, it's doing well. It's a big, big business. We have a proud heritage, but we see revenue declining, and that's going. How much per year? Yeah, what is it? Twenty percent per annum. Yeah. So it's it's not really a focus activity anymore. It's important. But is, it, is it profitable? Profitable? And how many do you yeah, sell yeah, per year? Yeah. No, it's profitable. We we sell two and a half million devices every year. Yeah. We generate cash. It's a uh, part of our history. We look after our customers well. Yeah. Uh, but that, that that's it. It's okay. not a situation. But it's not a it's not a stone anymore, which is basically gonna kill the company. No, it's no. It's it's uh, we've we've pivoted, as the English would say or the Americans would say. We are no longer dependent on the revenue in um, in um, in the consumer business, but it's really the location technology part of the business that 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 has the most. That's the most exciting. Then the second one, the telemetrics, all the kinds of companies you've bought, you've enhanced. And uh, last time uh, I was here, it was a hundred million business. How much is it now? It's close to two hundred million. It's a leading company in uh, Europe. With uh, we double the size of our nearest. You track and trace time. everything. All kinds yeah. of cars, all kinds of yeah. uh, trucks, everything, yeah. uh, everywhere, all over yeah. Europe. Yeah, it, uh, nearly a million vehicles are connected to our uh, platform, and uh, a lot of happy customers who manage their fleet in an efficient way. And that is, and that's a great business. Yeah. And what are you doing with that? We're going to. Well, we've announced uh, that we want to divest it. Um, so if people have a billion dollars lying around, they can have the most, uh, the market leader in Europe. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, <laughs> we didn't put a price sticker on it, uh, but well, but um, no, it's it's right. It's a it's a it's a wonderful business. And, yeah, but it's 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 not really into the core of maps and it's it's an application on top of it it's at a different stage of the business of the of its life cycle yeah. we want to concentrate on uh, where we think are the biggest opportunities and that's in location technology okay then the third business is your beautiful maps business which yeah. i also remember about if, if you have a movie a couple of years ago there was a dinner where they celebrated i think you spent 1.8 billion or something like that or how much was it yeah. to buy it pay, to pay yeah. for it it was a big it was a big chunk of money 2.2 or 1.8? Yeah, it was uh, it was two billion. Yeah. Two was. billion. They spent two billion, and I was there at the dinner. I, I remember that. It was fantastic. I mean, I was going wow, and because there are so few people who have maps. I mean, you have basically here, who is owned by your uh, by by the German many uh, car manufacturers. Market, yeah, you correct. have Google, and there's you. There's only three parties. Yeah. So how is that by a business doing? Yeah, it's so you know it's it's got its ups and downs. Let's let's face it. But we're doing very well, very well in the last three four years, where we see a revenue going up, our market share, especially in automotive, is going up, um, and that will continue for a number of years. We have a fantastic uh, traffic information product that uh, most car makers are, are uh, licensed. HD traffic, fantastic, yeah. So and that is uh, so so we have a good position it's a cash generative business so we, we we're looking good but there are bigger things to have in that in that area big and investments big investments yes but it's more now technology driven than capital driven i have to say so map making has changed in the last decade so it used to be a brute force game with a lot of people behind keyboards a lot of work in India and, uh, you know, um, um, uh, digitizing all the information. It's becoming more and more an inter a big data play where you tap I into existing data sources and then, and, you know, and then through technology and, 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 and then you get the buzzwords like computer vision, AI, deep learning. Uh, where you try to harmonize your data and uh, make sense out of it, and I that's. I remember you had in uh, we we had an uh, an uh, Tom Tom um, business to business thing, and and you and then uh, Jan Peet the Jan, um, um, uh, was announcing they had a billion a billion data points a month, and now he said it was I think about a, a, a billion data points a day or something like that. Yeah, it's crazy. The, the, the amount of data we get in is uh, is uh, is enormous. But you need two uh, things. First, if you want to know if you, if yeah. these cars need to be HD, and 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 if you want to use it for autonomous, what do you need to do in your car in your uh, in your car business? Well, in the car business, you need a different type of map, and that is a uh, a different spec that's generated automatically. 
uh, for using a, a software-driven uh, process, a video pipeline and a LiDAR pipeline. You take in a huge amount of data, you process it, and you create a 3D picture of, uh, of the reality with all the lanes and all the furniture and, and what have you. Mm -hmm. And that map is then used for three things. For So, so uh, it's, it's not a map you can see. It's mm -hmm. a map that's used by software developers to make autonomous cars a reality. Yeah. And that map is then used for perception. What's, what's going on around me? Is there a crossing? Is there a traffic light? Is there a new lane objects? Uh, so you can do, then you can do path planning. So where do I position a vehicle? Uh, left lane, right lane, preparing for an exit. Isn't that so the algorithm on top of the map? No, that is the map itself. The map needs to contain that information and then the algorithm can place the car in different lanes and different positions at different speed and a different heading. Mm. And then the third element is loca localization. So you want to know exactly, or you know, rules. you want to exactly where that car is okay. with a, with a high level of accuracy and reliability. So how and many people are working on that at the moment, and uh, how, how how big of an investment area is that? Well, we're on it now for I think more than five years. The first patents we filed the first patents f five or six years ago. Uh, but the initial stages was more research, trying to figure out what spec would look like. A lot of work together with car makers in trial and error and, you know, making sure we're doing the right thing. But now we're full in production. Uh, so we have HD maps for North America, for uh, Europe. Uh, we can see that the first commercial applications are coming to becoming a reality starting in 2019. Small tell scale. me, tell me what's happening. What can I do with an HD map except for autonomous driving? Uh? Well, what you can do is uh, we use it for power management uh, in, a, in mostly in trucks. Uh, so if you have a truck, you're very keen to reduce uh, fuel consumption because it's, it's a direct impact on your uh, p and your profitability. And with modern cruise control, you can manage the powertrain much better. So if you know you're going up a hill, you choose different power setting than when you go down a hill. If you know you're approaching a crossing where you need to give way, then you go to cruise mode and you reduce the power. And if you do that in a clever way, you can realize uh, well something around five to seven percent fuel savings. That's a nice, it? yeah. That's a nice modest. Uh, that's a nice modest thing. Now yeah. let me ask you: if you look at Google versus uh, here versus you, where are you now, and where are the other two? Well, so we are taking the uh, so I think so automotive uh, or, or self-driving technology is developing through two distinct. Uh, development uh, processes. One is uh, companies who are trying to do robo taxis, so they are going straight for uh, well completely self-driving. Yeah, uh, so no steering wheel, no uh, no Way brakes, no. Uh, uh, and, and what have you. And that is a very hard problem, uh, but you can spend a lot of capital to do it. So the 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 cars you can equip them with a lot of kit, and you know if those cars are two hundred thousand dollars or one hundred fifty thousand dollars, it's no that's not a re that's not a showstopper no. because those cars are used uh, continuously yeah. or, or at least uh, you know fifty percent of the of, of the time or something along those lines. But the car makers n are following a different path. They can't spend. They can't spend an additional hundred thousand dollars per car. Technology, so they take a more gradual path towards higher degrees of automation. So you see cruise control, cruise control plus, cruise control on steroids, uh, where the car can overtake itself, where it can, you know, stick to the maximum speed, mm -hmm. uh, you know, really drive on, on a closed access way. So those are the two different ways. Uh, so we, so uh, we know you have one wing and uh, that's Google. But I mean, if we first at the mapping business, before we go to autonomous driving, if you have Google here and you, what, what they, what what are the different uh, approaches and what because you are the, the neutral independent one you know compared to here and and Google is sleeping with the enemy I can imagine well, wh how do would you position those three? Well, we are very much technology driven, uh, so we see this as a as a as a as a, as a software uh, uh, challenge, and we are we've we've created a company and technology that are mostly software driven. 
And so we want to do uh, mapping in a fully o automated way using crowdsourcing, using modern technologies in the areas of computer vision and deep learning. We have a, a very modern map mapping platform where we can integrate all the data in uh, in real time. So from a technical perspective, we think we are in a in a good place. Mm -hmm. On top of that, we are you know we are kind of the Switzerland of mapping. We are independent. We non threatening. Uh, we can align our strategy with those of our customers, uh, and that is, uh, you know, that gives us, an, I think, an additional, you know, argument to. Yeah. Uh, and to here is more for the German uh, car manufacturer who will, will not supply the map so much to the competitors, uh, not necessarily. Well, I, I, I don't want to say too much. Uh, no. so don't say much they, about it, but I mean that is a very clear. They're doing, but but I think we are, you know, we we doing our thing, and uh, and uh, we feel good where we are. We we very happy with the process, we the progress we've made, mm -hmm. and I think customers start to see that as well. So now is the time to translate that technical leadership also into a market position. Mm -hmm. So the next. Yeah, you know, 24 months are going to be really, really, uh, really important to us. Okay, and then we have Google, and uh, Google was no, normally people wouldn't touch Google, the, the car manufacturer. But when we had Nissan and Renault, and everybody was going, "Oh my God, they, they, is this the first uh, of the of the many who are following you?" Does that mean uh, how is that with you? Does that mean if if they do something with Google and um, Renault and uh, Nissan, does it mean they completely stop working with TomTom? Tom? No, not at all. Uh, so this is only for limited uh, uh, proportion of their total production, uh, and there is a whole segment that will still be available where we can pitch and where we can continue our partnership with the alliance. Mm. And the area of autonomous driving is also wide open. So ADAS features, safety features, self-driving maps. Okay. All that is and not the car business is growing, and the car business is growing. Yeah, so market share is growing. Uh, penetration is growing, uh, so we're on, on the right trajectory. We want to play an active role as a supplier in the uh, to the automotive industry for self-driving technology. Did you like this video? There's more where this came from. Subscribe and click the bell to get notified about our new videos.